Alhamdulillahillazi bi ni'matihi tatimmu s-salihatu wa bi fadlihi tatanazzalu al-khayrati wal barakat wa salawatillahi wa taslimatihi ala nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amma ba'd The messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said if'alu al-khayra dahrakum wa ta'arradu li nafahati rahmatillah فإن لله نفحات من رحمته يصيب بها من يشاء من عباده وصلى الله أن يستر عوراتكم وأن يؤمن روعاتكم Do good deeds in the time that you have and take advantage of the moments of gentle breeze from the mercy of Allah. Verily, Allah has moments of gentle breeze from His mercy that He sends upon whomsoever He wills among His servants. Ask Allah to cover your faults and protect you from your anxieties. As the mercy of Allah is too vast to comprehend. This hadith clearly indicates that Allah has created opportunities and rewards and all good things for us. Things that just don't come annually but on a daily basis as well. As Allah grants us assistance in observing our obligations, He broadly extends to us more chances of gaining even more virtues and blessings that apply to places and times. As these times include the sacred months of the year, the days of Hajj, the day of Arafah, the last third of every night and the blessed hour on Friday when Dua is accepted, there is no doubt that this month of Ramadan is also one such rewarding time for us. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam confirms, إِنَّ رَمَضَانَ شَهْرٌ إِفْتَرَضَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ سِيَامَهُ وَإِنِّي سَنَنْتُ لِلْمُسْلِمِينَ قِيَامَهُ فَمَنْ صَامَهُ إِيمَانًا وَإِحْتِسَابًا خَرَجَ مِنَ ذُنُوبِكَ يَوْمِ وَلَدَتُ أُمُّهُ Verily, Ramadan is a month in which Allah Almighty has obligated its fasting. I have instituted for Muslims the practice of prayer at night. Thus, whoever fasted with faith and expecting reward will be expelled of sins like the day he was born from his mother. O Muslims, it's just a matter of days now that Ramadan has made its grand appearance. And just as we wonder how those days have gone by so quickly, the inevitable will take place without anyone realizing it. In fact, as the time of Ramadan was drawing closer, anxiety level was running higher. And while many were rejoicing at its coming, there were some who were scrambling for hopes, wondering whether they would still be around since nothing is predictable in human life, not even death itself. How many Muslims didn't you know or heard of perhaps people from your own relatives who passed away just before the commencement of Ramadan? Up to the night before Ramadan, our righteous forebearers, the companions of the Prophet and those who follow them in truth used to pour out every emotion that gargled inside them, pleading to their Lord to witness the grandeur of Ramadan. And their cry was always gracefully responded to because they yearned for the months as they saw it generously provided the means of attaining forgiveness and the pleasure of their Lord. O Muslims, gratitude to our Creator takes our attention off our problems and helps us instead to reflect on the goodness of His infant. And blessings. Now that you are actually in the glorious month, praise Allah for His blessings. Give gratitude that Allah has responded to your supplication as well. Give thanks to Allah abundantly, for indeed the one who never gets tired of blessing us and hearing our praises has commanded us to show gratitude for the boons and favors of Ramadan by way of fasting and doing other good deeds. Understand as well that giving thanks is a divine principle and it is the height of goodness and loyalty for a slave to honor his creator with full attention for providing sources by which he can earn perpetual blessings and thank him in return. No believer would ever get tired recognizing that our thanks to Allah are never enough. Aisha radiallahu anha reported about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. كان يقوم من الليل حتى تتفطر قدماه فقلت له لما تصنع هذا يا رسول الله قد غفر الله لك ما تقدم من ذنبك وما تأخر The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to keep standing in prayer until the skin of his feet would be cracked and until they would be swollen I asked him O messenger of Allah why do you do this while you have been forgiven of your former and latter sins Now that would be a startling question arising from the mind of any one of us as well Why did the Prophet ﷺ exert himself to this degree when his pure heart was firmly rooted on guidance and when he was already guaranteed paradise? But as the question pondered by the men and women around the Prophet in his time, they got their answer directly from him. He replied, أَفَلَا أُحِبُّ أَنْ أَكُونَ عَبْدًا شَكُورًا Should I not be a grateful slave of Allah? 
The pivotal point to note from this hadith is the concept that the Prophet ﷺ encourages us to incorporate into our lives thankfulness, appreciation, and gratitude to our Creator for all the unbounded favors and blessings He has bestowed upon us, the greatest of which is choosing us to be His servants. Notice how the Prophet in the hadith referred to his own very self as Abd, a slave of Allah, as such a term befits a pure soul and a heart that is ever humble, meek and submissive before the benefactor. All of this is apparent in the hadith which clearly illustrates and demonstrates how the Prophet's humility and thankfulness to Allah become evidenced by his constant praying in the darkness of the night with immense devotion. He used to cry as he read the Quran and standing for so long that his feet would become swollen and cracked despite knowing that he was free of all sins and mistakes. The Prophet was certainly not commanded to worship to this degree but rather it was a complete act of devotion and thankfulness to Allah because he understood and taught the believers that praise is drawn from the depth of the heart to moist the tongue and gratitude is confirmed through actions. In fact, reports on the Prophet's thankfulness and his devoted worship to Allah that he exemplified on different occasions and in all facets of his life are too overwhelming to enumerate in volumes of books. But just for a brief moment, let's ponder a bit about the state of our own gratitude, keeping in mind that the Quran throws into our face, Inna linsana la kafurun mubin. Indeed, man is clearly ungrateful. For every blessing that Allah has bestowed upon us is something that we have to be thankful about. Having been greatly blessed with life, health, and strength to witness Ramadan, we should become overwhelmed with a feeling of deep gratitude for the goodness of Allah. Our obedience to the laws, ordinance, and commandments should be the greatest expression of love and gratitude that we can offer to Him at this point. For how can we not rejoice in thankfulness for a month in which the gates of paradise are open and the gates of hell are closed and the devils are chained up? And when the rewards for good deeds are multiplied and people are raised in status and sins are forgiven? Of course, we can all rejoice over the month, but only if we had benefited from the days that have already passed by and are concerned that everything is in readiness for each remaining forthcoming mega days. And remember when your Lord proclaimed, If you are grateful, I will surely increase you in favor. Allahumma a'inna ala zikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik.